Have you wanted to make digital planner stickers but you're not super confident with your hand lettering? I'll show you a quick and easy method for all levels. Hi, I'm Diana, the artist behind my McDoodles. Welcome to my channel. Hi, welcome back. Today we're going to be making digital planner stickers in Procreate. For this project, you don't need anything special. You can use the built-in brushes that are included with the Procreate app. I've created a square size canvas in 3000 by 3000 pixels. You can make your canvas whatever size you wish, just make sure it's at 300 dots per inch. So first we're just going to go ahead and pick a font from the add text feature in Procreate. If you go to the actions menu, which is this little wrench, and then add, and then add text. You can quickly type out your text that you're going to use for a template when you make your stickers. I'm going to do the months of the year, but you could do this for all kinds of different stickers like to do or this week. Um, just think about what you would use in your planner and you can write the text accordingly. I'm going to keep it simple and just do the months of the year. Once you type out your text, you can pick a font that you like. So if you go to the little font um, menu here, and then you can scroll through and choose a font. You can also import new fonts. So right here, import font. You can find fonts you like or that you've purchased and import them into Procreate. And you can also make your own fonts. I have a tutorial on that, which I'll link up in the cards here. And if you would like to learn how to make a font from your own handwriting, then you can follow that tutorial. I'm going to pick maybe like a script font for mine. Choose whichever font you want, whatever you want the look of your planner stickers to be. I'm going to use this script font here. I'm going to make it nice and big so that it fits on my canvas. And um, keep it like pretty centered up. It's not a huge deal because at the end you're going to recenter everything anyway and crop these down. So something like that. And then you can either keep this exactly as it is, and that could literally be your sticker. You just turn off your background, and then I'll show you how to export these in a moment. Um, but that could be your sticker. But if you want it to be more of with like a personal touch and like something more unique that you created, then you could use this as a, um, a template. I'll go up here and just turn the opacity down a little bit, and then I'll just trace over it. I'll make a new layer over top of my font here, and I'm going to leave it as an editable font. You can click here and rasterize it and it will turn it into an image. But I want to be able to quickly edit for each month of the year. So I'm going to leave it as it is. And then make a new layer on the top and just trace over it. So pick a brush that you like. Um, the monoline brush is a great one for making nice, crisp, clean um, like lettering for stickers and stuff. So I'm going to go with that. And then you can literally just like trace over it, use it as a guide. So if you're not really confident in your hand lettering and you feel like it's a little shaky or it doesn't look as nice as you wanted to or something that you feel comfortable like selling or sharing, then you can use the text feature as a, a guide for your lettering. So then after you turn it off, you'll see this is your sticker. You could, um, you know, like add color or make it more fun in some way, add like some special stuff around it. I'm going to keep it really simple and just leave it as it is, just so I can quickly show you how to make these in this tutorial. So what I would do is turn off the background color and then you can see there's like tons of extra space around here. So when I make my digital stickers, I kind of like to make them all in one document. I don't like to create a new document for every single sticker. So like January, February, March, but not they're not all going to have their own separate document. I can make them all in one and then I just crop it down as close as I can around like the words. Um, so what I would do, maybe we'll make a few more just so I can show you. What I would do is I would crop it as close as I can so that this text is centered on the screen and it's cropped as close as possible to whatever the largest um, image or word is in the whole file. So let's just make a few just so I can show you for like the months that are shorter what I would do. So I did January, I'm going to click that one off and I'm just going to tap here and edit my text so I don't have to um, do it a million times. I just tap on it and then I edit it and that's a little bit of a shortcut that it saves a little bit of time over the long run. So let's make this say February, okay? And then make a new layer on the top. And then we're just gonna trace over the word February.
So there's my word February. And you can see I'm not like tracing exactly. It's like I kind of try to make it my own a little bit. And I feel a little bit better with like my hand lettering that I can kind of adjust it a little bit. I don't have to go exactly like tracing it exactly how it's typed. But do whatever works for you. So that's another long month. You can see it's about the same um, width and height as January. So let's just make a short month like May. So go back here to your text layer, tap on the little thumbnail thing there, edit text, and then let's just make it May. Okay, make a new layer on the top and then just trace over it. So now we have a few like bigger images and then the smaller one for May. So what I would do is I would click all of them on and I have showed this before in a separate tutorial on digital stickers which I can link in the cards and also put in the description of the video how I crop them and export them. So what I would do is stack them all up into the center of the page and then go up here to the actions menu which is the wrench and then canvas and then there's an option here, crop and resize. So I would click that, and then I take a look at whatever the biggest image is, and I crop it as tight as I can around that. In the littler one, like the month of May, it's gonna have a little bit of extra space around it. If it's significantly smaller, you might want to make a new document just for like the smaller stickers or the smaller words. Um, so you don't have to worry about if there's like, extra space in your PNG file. It's, um, it can be tricky if you're doing it for like good note stickers and things like that. Sometimes if you're selling them, people will complain if they're not pre-cropped. So I always pre-crop mine and make them as tight, tightly cropped in as possible. Um, and you can also do that if you're doing something like good notes, you can do it within the app. So it's not like a huge deal, but it's just something to keep in mind. So that's about as tight as I can get it. I keep all the settings the same. You can see you can type in specific dimensions um, and resolution and stuff. I'm just gonna keep everything the same and then push done. So I'll turn off my background and I don't need this text layer anymore. So I would delete that out. For the sake of this, I'm going to leave it in because I would like to make the rest of the months of the year but when you're finished, you can delete it out. You can also turn off any layers that you do not want to be exported by clicking this checkbox over here. So because it's turned off, it won't export. Um, only the things that are showing and turned on will export. Then I'll go here to the Actions menu, click Share, and then instead of just PNG, because it's going to export this mess, like these stacked up um, images, <clears throat> you don't wanna do that. So you push PNG files and it'll export every single layer that you have turned on as its own individual PNG. And it's also um, by folder. So if you have things grouped into a, a folder over here, then it'll export like that whole folder as its own PNG file. So after I click export PNG files, I would save it as a, um, a file into like a folder on my iPad. You can also do save as images and then it'll be like in your camera roll so you could easily add it into GoodNotes or uh, whatever uh, from your images. But I like to keep them organized into file folders. So I would do save to files. You can see you can also do open to GoodNotes. So there's some other options to explore, but I'm going to do save to files and then make a new folder that includes these PNG stickers. So now they'll all go into that folder and be nice and neat and organized in there. So you could totally leave them like that, or you could add like a white border and a drop shadow to make it look like an actual sticker. So I think that's kind of a fun option, especially for like GoodNotes, because it's supposed to look like it's an actual notebook, an actual planner. Um, I like to make mine look like as real as possible. And I don't know, I just like how it looks kind of like a digital scrapbook or something. So I'll show you how to add a white border and a drop shadow so that you can have this so it looks like a real sticker. Let's take a short break to talk about this awesome paper texture screen protector. 
You might have noticed there's almost no glare on this iPad screen when I'm filming tutorials, and that's because of my paper like screen protector. It really reduces the glare significantly, and that also helps with like eye strain when you're drawing on your iPad, and it gives you that nice like grippy feel as you're drawing across the screen like actual paper, which I love. Check out the link in the description for where you can get your paper texture screen protector for your iPad. Underneath of your lettering, make a new layer. And then you'll grab a white color or whatever color you want the background of your sticker to be. And I'm going to keep with the monoline brush pen, but just turn it up a little bit so that it's nice and big and makes a nice border for me. Now this is cropped pretty tight, so you might want to do this before you crop down your images. Um, it'll probably would be way easier because then you don't have to worry about staying within this really tightly cropped frame. So I would recommend doing it in your original larger document. So then I'll just kind of trace over the word and make a nice border. So this is the same method that you would do for like Cricut stickers or um, things like that, which I have shared in previous tutorials. So if you need help with making actual stickers, I have sticker tutorials on here as well. And I do the same method for making the nice um, like cut line border. So I just make it like as smooth as possible. You could even leave like the gaps like that. Okay, so something like that looks good. You could totally leave it like this. You could make just like a white border and then it looks like a cute sticker. You could turn down the opacity here and it would make it like a cute vellum sticker. Um, there's you know, like tons of options you could do. And you can also add a drop shadow. So if you would like to add a drop shadow to make it look like it's a 3D actual sticker, duplicate your white layer and then go to the bottom most one and fill it with black or very dark gray by either just color dropping or turning on alpha lock by taking two fingers and swiping to the right. And you can always do these things by tapping to get this menu as well. So alpha lock is on and then you could click fill layer and that will fill it with your color also. So if you have a more intricate design that you can't color drop, just do the fill layer. Um, and then turn alpha lock back off. Go up here to the uh, adjustments menu, which is like the magic wand looking thing. Click Gaussian Blur, and then I like to blur it about like 3%. And then it gives it like this cute little drop shadow that makes it look like a real sticker that's kind of like lifting off of the page. And I think those are really fun stickers for like good notes and stuff too. So I would do that for each individual design. Um, group them up into folders or flatten it down. And then export it as the PNG files like I previously showed you. I hope this tutorial was fun for you and you make lots of fun digital planner stickers. Don't forget to subscribe before you go so you don't miss out on the next fun tutorial. Here's some other videos you might enjoy. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.